Welcome to part two of chemical bonding. In the previous video, we looked at the ionic bonding that occurs between a metal and a nonmetal. In this video, we're going to look at the situation that arises between two nonmetals. Let's look at fluorine gas as an example. Fluorine is one of our diatomic elements, so it forms a molecule by bonding to itself. And because fluorine is a nonmetal, if it bonds to itself, it is a case of nonmetal bonding with a nonmetal. So we're going to start by drawing each fluorine individually. And fluorine has seven valence electrons. Now both want to reach eight. Now I can't just give away all the electrons on one and have the other one take all of them because it would put it way over eight. And if I just gave one from this fluorine to the fluorine on the right, then the one on the left would be stuck with six and that wouldn't be good. So there has to be a way for them both to get to eight valence electrons. And they can actually accommodate each other by sharing. The fluorine on the left shares this valence electron, while the fluorine on the right simultaneously shares this one. And when that happens, when these two are shared, they count for both atoms. So now the fluorine on the left has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight valence electrons, and the one on the right has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight for that one as well. They both meet the octet rule by sharing. Now this shared pair of electrons, the shared pair, is represented by a line. So we replace them by putting a line between the two fluorine atoms. Then we put in the remaining electrons that are not involved in bonding. We call them non-bonding electrons. So two terms there, the shared pair, those are the ones in the bond, get represented by a line, and then we have the non-bonding electrons that surround the atom. Now what we have here is actually the Lewis structure for this compound. That looks different from the ionic compound. That's because this type of bonding, this sharing of electrons, is called covalent bonding covalent bonding. The compound made is called a covalent compound or sometimes a molecular compound. Why is it called a molecular compound? Well, it's to distinguish it from the ionic compound, which is not made of molecules. If you recall from the last video, the ionic compounds all form crystal structures those networks of all different atoms. So they're not individual molecules. Whereas in covalent bonding, this is an individual molecule made up of exactly two atoms. So we call it a molecular compound. Let's look at a slightly more complicated example and see what we can come up with. Carbon dioxide is a covalent compound. Let's see if we can come up with the Lewis structure. We have carbon, oxygen, and oxygen. Carbon has four valence electrons, and each oxygen has six. Let's try sharing some of these electrons to see if we can fulfill the octet rule. So I'm going to share this pair, and I'm going to share this pair. And now let's count and see how many we have. The oxygen on the left has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's not quite there yet. Let's look at the carbon. One, two, three, four, five, six. The middle carbon has six, so that's also not in an octet yet. And the oxygen on the right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So none of these got to an octet, even though I shared electrons. So what am I going to do now? Well, I really need to rethink about what covalent means. Covalent means that I'm sharing electrons. It doesn't say that I'm limited to only sharing two electrons. So now let's go back through this. I'm going to share this electron and this electron. That's going to bring this oxygen on the right to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So this one's good. I'm at 8 now. Let's look at the carbon in the middle. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I'm almost there. So let's share some more off the carbon. I've got this one electron left at the bottom of carbon, and I'm going to share it. And we're going to create a shared pair like this. Now let's count the carbon. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So that one's good. And we'll count the oxygen on the left just to make sure. 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So now everything has reached the octet rule, and I have two shared pairs between each set of atoms. Between this oxygen and this carbon, there's two shared pairs. Between this carbon and this oxygen, there's also two shared pairs. When I go to write the Lewis structure for this, those change into lines. So the carbon has two lines going to the right and two lines going to the left. The carbon has no more non-bonding electrons on it, so I leave it alone. But these oxygens have pairs left over, and I'm going to just bring them down. One, two, three, four on that one. One, two, three, four on that one. Just bringing them down from what was left over, these non-bonding electrons. This is called a double bond. Because there are two sets of shared electrons, it's a double bond. If there are three lines or six electrons being shared, it would be a triple bond. You can keep going with that up to a maximum of four. Okay? Four lines would mean a quadruple bond, uh, eight electrons being shared. It's really important to remember that each line represents two electrons. That wraps up part two of chemical bonding. We've now talked about both ionic bonding and covalent bonding, the two major categories of bond types. And we've also talked about how to write their Lewis structures. If you have any questions about how to write Lewis structures or what these bond types mean, make sure you write them down in your notes and bring them with you to class. I'm going to continue this video and keep talking for a little bit about a surefire way of drawing Lewis structures for covalent compounds. So if you're a little bit shaky on it, it's a good idea to watch this next part. There is a method that exists for determining the structure of any covalent compound, and this sequence will work for anything. You just have to follow the steps carefully. This entire method boils down to one thing. You're trying to figure out what the difference is between the number of electrons needed to satisfy every octet and the number of electrons you start with based on the elements that you're given. So, step one for this method is going to be to count up the number of electrons that you have in the compound that you're given. Let's say I have the substance HCN, hydrogen cyanide. The first thing I'm going to do is count up how many electrons each one of these elements brings to this overall molecule. So hydrogen brings one, hydrogen has one electron, carbon has four, again I'm counting valence electrons, Nitrogen has five electrons, so one plus four plus five gives me ten valence electrons. Second step is to determine how many electrons I need to satisfy every single octet. Now, hydrogen is an important exception. Hydrogen is one of those elements that only needs two valence electrons, so I'm only going to count it as two. So hydrogen needs two, carbon needs eight. Nitrogen needs 8, so I add that all up. I have 18 total needed electrons. I sometimes call these octet electrons because I need 18 for an octet for everything. The third step is to subtract the number of valence electrons you start with from the number of octet electrons and divide that by 2. So if I do, and I'll tell you what that does in a second. So let's do that first. 18 minus 10 gives me 8. Divided by 2 gives me 4. This number gives me the total number of bonds that I need in this molecule. So now I'm going to sketch out what the structure should look like with these bonds in them. There's a couple, there's two notes I'm going to make here. One is that Hydrogen is never, never in the middle of a molecule. The second thing is that carbon is almost always in the middle of the molecule. So that should help you puzzle out the sequence of how to draw this. I'm just going to put it here. We have H, then C, then N. Now we're going to fill in the bonds in terms of what makes sense. Another good rule of thumb to remember is that hydrogen can only ever have one bond attached to it. So that takes care of one of my four. That means the other three have to go here. 
The last step is to fill in the remaining electrons that are left over. Well, what electrons am I talking about? Well, remember, I originally had 10 valence electrons. I've used up eight of them in bonds. So that means there are two that I have to put somewhere here. Two of the remaining original valence electrons still have to go somewhere. And the way I put them in is to fill the octet rule. So are any of these elements not meeting the octet rule? Well, hydrogen has two electrons from this bond, so it's all set. Carbon has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons from these four bonds. So carbon also is at an octet. Nitrogen, however, only has six electrons from these three bonds. So I know that it needs two more, and I luckily have two left over to put right there. And this is the Lewis structure for HCN, hydrogen cyanide. This method will always work for determining the Lewis structure of a covalent compound if you carefully follow the steps.